Hey guys, welcome to TFL Truck. Today I am out here in the beautiful Rocky Mountains with our brand new 2020 Jeep Gladiator. And my dad is showing up in something he said I wouldn't expect. He was correct. Howdy, what's this? Well, it's a two-wheeled contraption. I believe it's called a motorcycle. It's not a truck though. It's not. You know what? In the last few episodes, we've compared three different size trucks, uh, no payment needed. So today, I thought it'd be fun to take something completely different. What if you fall off? Uh, then I've got a lot of protection, hopefully, to keep me from having to go to the hospital. All right, that's coming up next. So today, I'm in for a treat because we're not going over just one, but in fact, two mountain passes. First, we're gonna take on Webster Pass, which is my favorite, a shelf road, and it gets a little butt clenchy, especially for Tommy because it gets really tight. With this, no problem. And then, we're gonna take on probably the most beautiful pass in all of Colorado, especially in the fall when the aspen trees are turning a bright gold. I'm talking about Boreas. Now, that is a dirt road, but oh my goodness. It is spectacular at this time of year. All right, Tommy, uh, there's a car in our way. Why are they taking a Highlander up here? This is not Highlander terrain, I'll tell you what. I genuinely don't like heights. Like, it is one of my, uh, big fears in life. That's probably a four or five hundred foot drop down there. This episode of No Payment Needed is brought to you by our friends over at Onyx Off-Road, your number one stop for everything navigation when it comes to finding your way out on the trail. Simply download the app and start exploring thousands of miles of trails in Colorado and around the country so you know what you're getting yourself into. Now to connect the two passes, we're gonna have to go on, well, the public highway. And that's why I brought this, the perfect motorcycle for today. It's a KTM Enduro 690, which is a dual sport. It's basically a dirt bike, but because it's street legal, it has, well, turn signals and a headlight and rear view mirrors, making it, I think, the perfect tool for today's no pavement needed. I mean, yes, the motorcycle is very cool, but Gladiator is a real vehicle that you can use to do real vehicle stuff. So it's got four doors and places to put stuff like videographers and camera gear. And it even has a tent on the back so you can sleep in it. It's just much more usable for like 99.9% .9 of the population. Oh yeah, I forgot the most important thing. Since this is a dual sport, it has ABS, which is great on the road. But I gotta tell you, there is nothing more terrifying than having ABS in the dirt down a steep hill because effectively it means you have no braking. So KTM, of course, has thought of that, which allows me to disable ABS every time, well, I start the bike because it comes back on automatically, which kind of sucks. Uh, there's a car in our way. Yep. Great thing about a motorcycle is I don't care. You can just zip around them. I just zip zip. I just zip around them. I'll meet you at the entrance of the pass. All right, sounds good, Dan. I, I can't zip around the gentleman in the Highlander. Why are they taking a Highlander up here? This is not Highlander terrain, I'll tell you what. Oh, oh wait, there's one more. Is there one more coming? Yeah, sorry about no that. No worries. Ah uh, yes, the uh, classic Coloradan in their Subaru with 8.7 inches of ground clearance trying to tackle everything. But you know, Subarus are great cars. When you get them out into some of these more Rocky Mountain passes, they, uh, they can get a little hung up, especially if it's your first time out there. a 
today is called Webster Pass. It can be pretty rocky and you know pretty demanding, especially on stock vehicles. But there's one part of Webster Pass. You go over the summit and then you've got this shelf road and I quickly found out what brown can do for you on that <laughs> shelf road with my dad in a Raptor a couple years back. It was the single most terrifying thing I've ever done off-road being just inches from this 600 foot fall. So I'm hoping today I'll be able to retain my underpants without having to go to the spare set. Here's the thing about a motorcycle. It's just uh, a lot faster and it takes a lot more physical exertion. You're not just sitting in a Jeep, you're actually working it. I mean, you have to lean the bike over, you have to really scan ahead, and it becomes just so much fun. Because sometimes, let's face it, in a Jeep, you're being like, well, tossed around like a rag doll. <laughs> Got that, oh, you know what bar? But on a motorcycle, it's all you. You know, it's kind of the difference between, I would say, you know, watching basketball and playing basketball. Oh, look who it is. All right, Speedy, I finally caught up to you here. You got a water crossing, what now? Yeah, I forgot about this river crossing. <laughs> you know, the thing about river crossings is, like big rocks you can't see, uh, because if you don't see them, right, you just go over them. If I don't see them, I get very wet. All right, well, go for it. I'll see you at the serpentines. All right. <laughs> you want to see me falling, don't you? No. Well executed there, Dad. Engine died. That's never a good thing. Almost made it. Now for the Gladiator. This is how you cross a river. Slides bow wake at five miles per hour here. Surprisingly deeper than I thought it might be. Oh. Big rock there, and up the other side. No worries. So I don't know where my dad went. He's not in front of me. Well, I assume he's in front of me, but I can't see him. And we're just cruising along in the Gladiator. It's performing perfectly as always. I love driving this Jeep on this kind of just rocky roaded out terrain because the wheelbase is so long and these 35 inch Beat of Goodrich KM3s are nice and squishy. So they just soak up all of the big bumps and imperfections with ease. Now the one thing about motorcycle riding, oh, it's a little tricky out here, is it's much easier to go up than to go down. To go up, you kind of just uh, hug the tank, scooch up, and let the motorcycle do the work. To go down, yeah, it gets scary because you're picking your way through uh, rock fields. Uh, so if you get it wrong, you end up going down. And I just went over a bunch of those whoop-de-doos, and I've done this path before. And what I used to do in my younger days was I would jump those whoop-de-doos. And then I think two years ago I did that, came down, saw a rock, uh, and uh, tried to steer to avoid the rock, except my front wheel was in the air, it doesn't steer very well. Hit the rock, motorcycle went over, I went over, elbow went in my ribs, cracked a few ribs, and then I had about a month of very uncomfortable sleeping. So now, as I'm a little older, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't jump those anymore. It's uh, not worth the month of pain. I'm here at this kind of old campsite, came up that way, uh, and as you can tell, a Tommy is nowhere to be seen. Basically anything below 10 miles an hour on a bike is just not good. Hey, here comes Tommy, finally, there he is. <laughs> and he's hauling butt, and it took him a long time. So um, I guess the lesson is, if you're gonna ride dirt bikes or dual sports, do it with other dirt bikes.
Tommy, top of Webster Pass, over 12,000 feet. What is that, two and a half miles or so? And no pavement needed. So Dad, how's the motorcycle doing? You know, it's doing great. This is like maybe the uh, tenth bike I've owned here in Colorado. I started out with the Sherpa, with a little Kawasaki 125, and then that was like I saw myself in a reflection, and I said, "I'm a clown on a tiny little bike." And so I went to a little bit bigger bike, a DRZ 450, which is a Suzuki, and then I took it up here. And guess what happened? I don't know. You rode it down? No, I, I was caught in the middle of the storm these black clouds came in and I came up here and uh, I went down and there was a big snow field down there so I couldn't go down and all of a sudden I was the tallest thing out here and the bike was uh, carbureted and it would not go up I could not get it, it was just... and that's when I decided uh, no more carbureted bikes but wait wait there was a WR450 that I also had for a while, that was a really good dirt bike. I mean, that was like a motocross bike. This is uninteresting to the car viewers, so I say we should just go down Webster Pass and get it over with because I want to get back and get some lunch because I'm starving. And you know what is interesting to the car viewers? What? The fact that it gets super tight down here. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm aware. I genuinely don't like heights. Like it is one of my uh, big fears in life. And you're gonna call me a weenie, but it is what it is. And it's one thing to not like heights, but it's another thing not to like heights for a good reason. And this is a good reason, because that's probably a four or 500 foot drop down there. And I'm no longer more relaxed than my dad in that motorcycle, by the way. Just paying attention. Really pay attention to the cliff face here. I can safely get through this. Doing good so far. But if I see someone coming up the other side, I'm gonna be uh, quite nervous. Now the great thing about the Jeep, of course, is it's got these big wide tires which give you a lot of traction, especially when going downhill. But the great thing about the motorcycle, it's well, about yay wide. And right here with this, uh, look at this fall, man. That is not something I'd want to, you know, be into in a big old uh, Jeep. But uh, Tommy, come on down, I'll help you through it. It's getting super narrow, like really, really narrow. Like, I'm glad I have a gladiator, not a full-size truck narrow. You're good, you're just running over a Nice. Ooh-wee! Good job, Jeep. Right now is the point where we are off the trail and back into civilization. This is where you need that license plate, so we're both good to go. One more thing, of course, that we have to do, and that is to hide this. Now, if you're wondering what this is, well, this is our little surprise Easter egg. Yep, so this is a Ridge Wallet. Our friends over at Ridge, Ridge Wallet sent us these. These are super cool, sleek wallets, bulletproof, allegedly. <laughs> and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide this someplace on Boreas Pass. We'll leave a little Colorado flag 20 feet from where it's hidden, and you gotta find it. And included in here is a no pavement needed yeah, t-shirt. Sure. Can't buy these. You can only 
Come and get them for free. So when you find this Tupperware container hidden on Boris Pass, send an email with a picture of yourself holding the t-shirt to the uh, email on the card in the box, and you will make you famous on our community page. All right, Tommy, I think that's a clue to where we're hiding it. We're at the top of Boreas Pass, and it's time to, well, hide our little Easter egg. So I'm gonna go hide this somewhere in the rubble, Yeah. and they're gonna have to go find it. You know what cool, it's cool about being up here? What? We're it's on cold? the Continental Divide. Oh. So the water that pours on this side goes to the Pacific Ocean, the water that rains on the other side goes to the Atlantic Ocean. Right, I'm boring it. Tommy, go hide it somewhere in what used to be, well, figure it out when you come up here. Don't make it too easy. So in this episode of uh, No Pavement Needed, pavement was needed. Yeah, we had a, a, a little bit of on-road time to get to this, the next pass, but a ton of fun out here today. Yeah, so, uh, you know, motorcycle or truck? I'm still going with the truck because I can have my nice beverages, I can have my cool AC. Clearly, I'm looking pretty preppy today, so yeah, truck all the way. You know, it's pretty amazing for me is that you can take a motorcycle like this and take it up and over a 12,000 foot pass and do it much faster than you can do that. And then at the same time, you could fly up here to Boreas at what, twice the speed of that. I mean, it's just such a much more nimble and athletic experience. If you're looking to get places quickly, the bike is the way to do it. If you're looking to have more fun, the bike is the way to do it. Arguable. Yeah. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Fast Lane Truck. Check out what that? TFLcar.com, TFLtruck.com, TFLoffroad.com. Should I keep going? No, you're out of going. All right. All right. Thanks for watching, and come back next week when we'll take on another Colorado Pass. I think this time I'll be inside. Mm -hmm.